Why do Java developers wear glasses? Because they can't see sharp. This video is all about Java and how it went from being the absolute darling of the software development community to that kind of ugly blanket that you keep in the back of the wardrobe and hope none of your guests ever have to use. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Java. Java was born in the early 1990s, back when the internet was just beginning to take off. That's a time that I can remember well, because I'm old. Java was created by James Gosling and his team at Sun Microsystems. Initially, the project was called Oak, and it was named after an oak tree that stood outside Gosling's office. However, due to good old trademark issues, the name was later changed to Java. The name Java came from the coffee that they were drinking at the time, and the primary goal behind Java was to develop a language that could be platform independent. In other words, Java was designed to write code that could run on any device, regardless of the underlying hardware or the operating system. This concept was revolutionary at the time and encapsulated Java's famous tagline, write once, run anywhere. So why did programmers initially fall in love with Java? Well, one of the main reasons was its promise of platform independence. Before Java, developers had to write different versions of their software for each operating system it might run on. And that was not only time consuming, but it was also really prone to errors because of the testing involved in all those different environments. If you ever try to write an Android app, you'll know all about testing on different platforms. So Java's introduction of the Java virtual machine changed the game entirely. The JVM acted as an intermediary between the Java code and the underlying hardware that it was running on. So that enabled the same Java program to run on any system that had a JVM installed. Another big advantage of Java was its robustness and the various security features that it had. So Java was designed with a strong emphasis on early error checking and runtime checking, and it also had garbage collection, which helped prevent many common programming mistakes. Java's security model was also, at the time, really ahead of its time. It had features that made it more resistant to common vulnerabilities like buffer overflows and pointer errors, um, and those kinds of things are really prevalent in languages like C and C++. Java's rise to popularity was meteoric. By the late 1990s, it had become the language of choice for web development, and that's thanks to the emergence of applets. Applets are small Java programs that could run in a web browser, and that added interactivity and dynamic content to web pages in a way that was previously not really possible back then. Major corporations like IBM and Oracle began adopting Java into their enterprise applications due to its scalability and its reliability. The introduction of the Java 2 Enterprise Edition, J2EE, in 1999 cemented Java's place in the enterprise world, and it's still very well known as an enterprise programming language. J2EE provides a set of specifications and guidelines for developers for multi-tier distributed web applications, and that made Java the go-to language for building large-scale enterprise applications, and that further solidified its dominance in the industry. The love for Java was also fueled by the vibrant community and the ecosystem that was built up around it. Sun Microsystems made the decision to open source the Java development kit in 2006, and that was a pivotal moment that really spurred innovation and collaboration in the open source community. The open source nature of Java meant that developers could contribute to its development, and that led to a huge number of libraries and frameworks and tools that made Java development more efficient and more enjoyable than the alternatives at the time. One of the most significant contributions to the Java ecosystem was the development of IDEs like Eclipse and IntelliJ IDEA. These are tools that divide, provided developers with powerful features like code completion, debugging, and refactoring. And that made Java development much more productive and much less error prone than the alternatives at the time. Java's influence extended beyond its own ecosystem as well. Many modern programming languages, including C Sharp and Kotlin and Scala, they drew inspiration from Java's syntax and its features. Java's emphasis on object-oriented programming and its memory management and its robust standard library set set the trend for many of the languages that followed it. So in essence, Java laid the groundwork for all of the modern programming languages we have today, especially in the OOP realm. Despite the strong start and the widespread adoption, Java's popularity has been on a notable decline in recent years. Look at this graph of questions tagged with Java on Stack Overflow. You can see that it peaked about 2014, and then it's been on this steady downward trend. Also, according to the Stack Overflow developer survey that they run every year, Java has consistently slipped in the rankings over the past few surveys. In the most recent survey in 2024, it's actually down here below C++ even, which is slightly ironic because that was what it was trying to improve on. So what happened? Why did developers start to fall out of love with Java? 
Well, one major factor is the rise of newer, more modern programming languages. So all the languages above, like Java here on the list, things like Python and JavaScript and Go, they've gained significant traction, and each one of those brings something fresh and appealing to the table. Python, for instance, is loved for its simplicity and its readability. That makes it a favorite amongst beginners. And there's JavaScript with its dominance in web development, and then Go with its efficiency and its performance. And also, one of my favorite languages that I talk about on this channel a lot is C Sharp. C Sharp in a lot of ways has overtaken Java and is now a much more feature rich and nice to use language these days. Another reason for Java's decline is its perceived complexity. So while Java was once seen as a more accessible alternative to languages like C++, it's now often viewed as a more cumbersome language compared to newer languages. Java's syntax, while it is quite powerful, it can be really verbose and rigid, and that verbosity makes coding in Java feel more like a chore sometimes, especially when compared to the succinct and expressive syntax of languages like Python. Also, Java's object-oriented programming model, which was once a key selling point, is now seen as a bit outdated. Many modern languages offer more flexible approaches like functional programming, and that can lead to cleaner and more maintainable code. Indeed, there's so many functional programming features in C-sharp now that you can pretty much write an entire C-sharp application without declaring any classes or doing any OOP. This code here is valid C-sharp, and the functions down here are doing pattern matching, which is like a functional programming version of a procedural switch statement. This code doesn't look like object-oriented programming at all, and it's an example of how C-sharp has been evolving and embracing these new methods. And that's definitely not the case with Java. While Java has tried to incorporate some functional programming features, there's no Java equivalent to this kind of C-sharp syntax. So as a result, Java is seen as playing catch up rather than leading away. Java's ecosystem, while it's massive, also has a double-edged sword to it because the sheer number of libraries and frameworks and tools can be a bit overwhelming, and particularly for newcomers. The abundance of tools can lead to like what's called decision fatigue, where developers spend a lot more time choosing the right tool rather than actually focusing on solving a problem. Performance is another area where Java's faced criticism. While Java's performance has improved significantly over the years, it's still often perceived as slower compared to languages like Go or Rust, which are designed with performance in mind. In an era where efficiency and speed are paramount, especially for large-scale real-time applications, that perception can be a major drawback for Java. Now let's talk about something a bit more intangible coolness, right? In the world of technology, trends and perceptions actually matter a lot more than people give them credit for. Java, for better or worse, has become associated with large legacy enterprise systems. It's the language of big banks and big insurance companies and massive corporations. So while that speaks to its reliability and its robustness, it doesn't exactly scream innovation or excitement. If you contrast that with languages like Python and JavaScript, which are often associated with startups and cutting edge technology and rapid development, these languages are seen as much more agile and much more adaptable, and they fit that modern developer's desire for quick iteration and quick experimentation. The association with legacy systems has given Java a bit of a sort of uncool reputation, especially among younger developers who are looking to work on the next big thing rather than maintaining an old system. Also, the pace of innovation in the Java community has been relatively slow. So while the Java ecosystem is extensive, significant updates and features have historically been few and far between with Java. The introduction of new versions of Java often involve a long wait, and the updates, while they're quite big, they don't always keep pace with the rapidly changing needs of the development community. In contrast, languages like JavaScript and Python, they have vibrant communities that push for rapid and continuous improvement. And that makes them feel a lot more dynamic and a lot more in tune with the current technological landscape. In my personal opinion, the decline in Java's popularity isn't just about the language itself. It's about the shift in landscape of technology and the evolving needs and the preferences of developers. Java is a powerful and a capable language, but it has struggled to shake off that image of the language of the past. It's reliable, but in a world that prizes agility and innovation, reliability alone isn't enough to stay on the top. Developers today are looking for languages that are not only powerful, but are also flexible, and they're easy to learn, and they're fun to use. None of those really apply to Java. They want to be part, developers want to be part of vibrant communities that are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And while Java still does have a place in the programming world, especially in these big enterprise environments, it hasn't quite managed to capture the imagination of the new generation of developers in the same way as languages like Python, JavaScript, and Go. 
So there you have it. Those are basically the reasons why JavaScript's seen a decline in popularity and why developers have started moving towards other languages. If you disagree with anything I've said or if you have your own opinions, then do write me a comment below. I'd love to discuss this with people that watch my videos like you. But until next time, my name's James and why not check out some of my other videos here on the Trains Code YouTube channel.